Maryam Mirzakhani Leading the Way Maryam Mirzakhani, an Iranian mathematician, was the first and only woman till date to win the prestigious Fields Medal in Mathematics. This award, given to mathematicians under the age of 40, is considered the mathematics equivalent of the Nobel Prize. Winning this is an extraordinary feat. Unfortunately, the world lost the mathematician in July 2017 at the age of 40. Read on to discover the life story of Maryam Mirzakhani. As an eight-year-old, Maryam Mirzakhani used to tell herself stories about the adventures of a remarkable girl. At bedtime, her heroine would become a mare who would travel the world or fulfill some other grand destiny. In 2014, Mariam, a 37-year-old mathematics professor at Stanford University, USA, became the first woman to win the Fields Medal. She was awarded for her work in the dynamics and geometry of Riemann surfaces. Mariam had a reputation among mathematicians for tackling the most difficult questions in her field with dogged persistence. With her low voice and steady grey-blue eyes, Mariam projected an unwavering self-confidence. But she was also very humble. When an email arrived saying that she would receive the Fields Medal, she assumed that the sender's email account had been hacked. As a child growing up in Tehran, Mariam had no plans of becoming a mathematician. She often watched biographies of famous women such as Marie Curie and Helen Keller on TV. These stories instilled in her an ambition to do something great with her life. Mariam was married to a theoretical computer scientist and was blessed with a daughter. Mariam constantly doodled, drawing images related to her research. Doodling helped her focus. According to Mariam, her daughter Anahita often exclaimed, Oh, mommy is painting again, when she saw the mathematician drawing. Mariam was of the opinion that one has to spend some energy and effort to see the beauty of maths. This is an excerpt from an interview with the mathematician. What first drew you to mathematics? What are some of your earliest memories of mathematics? As a kid, I dreamt of becoming a writer. My most exciting pastime was reading novels. In fact, I would read anything I could find. I never thought I would pursue mathematics before my last year in high school. I grew up in a family with three siblings. My parents were always very supportive and encouraging. It was important for them that we have meaningful and satisfying professions. But they didn't care as much about success and achievement. In many ways, it was a great environment for me though these were hard times during the Iran-Iraq war. My older brother was the person who got me interested in science in general. He used to tell me what he learnt in school. My first memory of mathematics is probably the time that he told me about the problem of adding numbers from 1 to 100. I think he had read in a popular science journal how Goss solved this problem. The solution was quite fascinating for me. That was the first time I enjoyed a beautiful solution, though I couldn't find it myself. Could you talk about your mathematical education? What experiences and people were especially influential? I was very lucky in many ways. The war ended when I finished elementary school. I couldn't have had the great opportunities that I had if I had been born ten years earlier. I went to a great high school in Tehran, Farzanegan, and we had very good teachers. 
I met my friend Roya Beheshti, now a mathematics professor at Washington University, the first week after entering middle school. It is invaluable to have a friend who shares your interests and helps you stay motivated. Our school was close to a street full of bookstores in Tehran. I remember how walking along this crowded street and going to the bookstores was so exciting for us. We couldn't skim through the books like people usually do here in a bookstore. So, we would end up buying a lot of random books. Also, our school principal was a strong-filled woman who was willing to go a long way to provide us with the same opportunities as the boys' school. Mariam and Roya had asked the principal to arrange for math problem-solving classes like the ones being taught for boys in high school, which the principal agreed to. Later, both of them made it into the Iranian Maths Olympiad team where Mariam earned a gold medal. This led her to discover her strengths and her love for mathematics. As a teenager, I enjoyed the challenge. But most importantly, I met many inspiring mathematicians and friends at Sharif University. At Sharif University, we had problem-solving sessions and informal reading groups with my classmates. The friendship and support of all the people I met there and later at Harvard helped me a lot in many different ways. I am grateful to all of them. You were educated in Iran. Could you comment on the differences between mathematical education there and in the US? It is hard for me to comment on this question since my experience here in the US is limited to a few universities and I know very little about the high school education here. However, I should say that the education system in Iran is not the way people might imagine here. As a graduate student at Harvard, I had to explain quite a few times that I was allowed to attend a university as a woman in Iran. While it is true that boys and girls go to separate schools up to high school, this does not prevent them from participating, say, in the Olympiads or the summer camps. But there are many differences. In Iran, you choose your major before going to college, and there is a national entrance exam for universities. Also, at least in my class in college, we were more focused on problem solving rather than taking advanced courses. What attracted you to the particular problems you have studied? When I entered Harvard, my background was mostly combinatorics, and algebra. I had always enjoyed complex analysis, but I didn't know much about it. In retrospect, I see that I was completely clueless. I needed to learn many subjects which most undergraduate students from good universities here know. I started attending the informal seminar organized by Kurt McMullen. Well, most of the time, I couldn't understand a word of what the speaker was saying, but I could appreciate some of the comments by Kurt. I was fascinated by how he could make things simple and elegant. So, I started asking him questions regularly and thinking about problems that came out of these illuminating discussions. Working with Kurt had a great influence on me though now I wish I had learnt more from him. By the time I graduated, I had a long list of raw ideas that I wanted to explore. What do you find most rewarding or productive? Of course, the most rewarding part is the aha moment, the excitement of discovery and enjoyment of understanding something new. The feeling of being on top of a hill and having a clear view. But most of the time, doing mathematics for me is like being on a long hike with no trail and no end in sight. How has the Clay Fellowship made a difference for you? The Clay Fellowship gave me the freedom to think about harder problems 
travel freely, and talk to other mathematicians. I'm a slow thinker and have to spend a lot of time before I can clean up my ideas and make progress. So I really appreciate that I didn't have to write up my work in a rush. What advice would you give to young people starting out in maths, that is, high school students and young researchers? I'm really not in a position to give advice. I usually use the career advice on Terry Tao's webpage for myself. Also, everyone has a different style, and something that works for one person might not be so great for others. What advice would you give to lay people who would like to know more about mathematics? What it is, what its role in our society has been, and so on? What should they read? How should they proceed? This is a difficult question. I don't think that everyone should become a mathematician, but I do believe that many students don't give mathematics a real chance. I did poorly in maths for a couple of years in middle school. I was just not interested in thinking about it. I can see that, without being excited, mathematics can look pointless and cold. The beauty of mathematics only shows itself to more patient followers.